broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Well, welcome to Tech Time with Nathan. I'm the show that makes you go, hmm. Technology News of the Week, the show for the everyday person. Talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. I'm Nathan Mum, your host and a technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise. Our co-host here, Mike Roday, is in studio and he is the award-winning author and our human behavior expert. And boy, let me tell you, we're going to go human behavior stuff all over in today's uh, no, we're show. Not. So, uh, we're going gonna... human. We're going about... We got lots of stuff to talk about. Now, we are live streaming. We have a theme of the day. We do have a theme of the day. We do. We are live streaming on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. We are friends from different backgrounds, but we bring our best technology show possible weekly for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We're glad to have Odie, our producer, at the control panel today. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right. This week on Tech Time with Nathan Wum, welcome fellow tech enthusiasts to a radio show where we blend bits and bites into a delightful digital cocktail with a little whiskey on the side. In the land where floppy disks are golden tokens, Facebook emerged from the pixelated haze. The social media giant is on a mission to resurrect their forgotten relic, the poke. Yes, you heard it right. They're going to be trying to make poking cool again. But what does that mean to the age-old emojis and gifts that we're used to? We also explore the quirky revival of their digital transactions and interactions with poking. Meanwhile, NVIDIA, the graphics powerhouse, is flexing its AI muscle They've harnessed an artificial intelligence to transform game characters into chatbots. Imagine having a conversation with your favorite video game hero. How surreal. But will this technology revolutionize the gaming or lead to unforeseen consequences? Hold on if you have a Wi-Fi router because Nintendo's portable online play is about to go dark. It's like unplugging your Game Boy mid-Pokemon battle. Utter chaos. Will this move be the end of our pixelated plumbers? Or will they unveil a warp pipe to a parallel universe where lag doesn't exist? And speaking of games, the prestigious Game of Awards crowned Boulder's Gate 3 as the Game of the Year in 2023. Join us as we celebrate this epic fantasy adventure and discuss what makes it a standout title. And don't touch that joystick. We've got our fan favorite segment letters where we decode your scamming and phishing emails and sprinkle them with a little pixelated stardust. So grab your VR headset, adjust your tinfoil hat, and join us on Tech Time Radio with your host, Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right, story number one. Are you ready, Mike? Here we go. Portable online play is about to go dark. Will this be the end for Nintendo? Let's go to Corinne Westland for more on the story. What happens when you shut down an online community of over 12 million users? Nintendo is about to find out. Online play and other online communication functionality will end for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U software at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on April 8, 2024. This also includes online cooperative play, internet rankings, and data distribution. This applies to the following units. The new Nintendo 3DS, new Nintendo 3DS XL, new Nintendo 2DS XL, the Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo 3DS XL, Nintendo 2DS, Wii U Deluxe, and the Wii U Basic. Nintendo stated, We sincerely thank players for using the online services of Nintendo 3DS and Wii U software over a long period of time and apologize for any inconvenience. What the heck? What's that? What the heck is going on? I thought on? they were just taking the store offline. No, they're taking the whole online play. They're taking avail- the whole online the- platform down. That is correct. And That's you can buy a brand new N- a Nintendo 3DS as of today. You can buy that. And 
There's also a called exclusive softwares that come with these new Nintendo 3DSs. Any of the exclusive software that has online play and essentially exclusive software was games that couldn't play on the old Nintendo DSs because they didn't have the processing power and they would come preloaded or downloaded on the game itself with online play. Mm. All those games go extinct like the dinosaurs. Uh, okay, what what is the excuse for it? Why are they doing it? Well, this is nothing new. Online games have done this before. EverQuest once dominated the online world, and it decided to close its servers down. World of Warcraft became very popular after that. So it's not that this is a new thing to do, but this is absolutely going to make a big dent. All, Nintendo's always been about portability. It's been about playing games. I've gone on and I play an NBA 2K game in there and I go online and I'll find somebody in the lobby and play. This would be like equivalent to Xbox. We all have an Xbox subscription yeah, pass. This can also be a- It'd be like just dying and you couldn't play any online games with those. Now, Nintendo wants to make sure that they have some details very clear. You'll still be able to play offline with the online service end. So if your game has an offline component or a story already pre-built into it, You'll still be able to play those services. So you'll so that's like Star War, you know Star Wars uh, Battle Battlefront Front, right? Yeah. There's an o- offline component that you can play through. That missions. You can play through mission, yeah. right? But the reason why people play that game is for the online game. That's correct. So again. Why? Well, they have said that they may still continue to have online services for two games, Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter. So I guess those are two games that they said that they will still allow people to play. So I think the Pokemon Bank is how you transfer characters back and forth uh, mm-hmm. from so game to is game. This, is this because they're not making enough money? Well, they're saying that they're ending their services um, third-party publishers will also end services that are on their platform. So unless a third party spins up their own server, this will also be down itself. Now, you'll still be able to download and update data of your purchased software. So if I purchased a game online, like Mario Brothers or anything like that, I could still go and download the game in the store, so I haven't lost this. But it does say that it, you will lose all of the online purchase options that are available and that you will not be able to have any of the Nintendo eShop content, which was really big in the Wii. That was like the whole Wii environment where you could interact with everybody. That will be turned off. Now, they threatened to do this in the I end of like 2023. Like a bullet to their head. And they pushed it back. So it's already been pushed back once mm. in this time deal. Their biggest complaint and their biggest issue they have is the environment that they have is pretty laggy. So people will play the games in these simulated like a sports game. So I'll play NBA 2K against somebody on there, and I may dribble the ball and shoot, and by the time that they get the synchronization, the other person that's playing, okay, well, it, that... it's glitchy. So instead of them fixing their infrastructure to be able to support this, I think they're just they're deciding just to down it. down the system and see what happens, <laughs> see how many people complain, and and then launch probably a new service. How are they going to complain? Well, they don't have a, f- a format to complain in. Well, you can you can call up the Nintendo. Yeah, the, I'm sure. I'm sure. Nintendo hotline. I'm sure everybody and, knows about the Nintendo hotline. Well, okay. Well, there you go. Big. That's, that's an breaking. Old this thing. is pretty breaking news. Yeah, that's crazy. This was actually, brought up at our production meeting. When we talked. We, when we talked about it last night. It was like the store. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's, no, this is our that online seems really stupid. No, no, no. It's not just a store. It's their whole online if service. They're taking, yeah, if they're taking down their whole online multiplayer platform, that... Do you know who brought this story to us? Odie. Who? Odie was did. it Odie? Yes, it did. Yeah. Are you? Do you have a Nintendo DS? Mm, yes, I do. And I have a DSi XL. Okay. And I don't play on them, like, online at all, but the video came up on my feed on one of the social medias. I can't remember. And it just really broke my heart. Like, you have this... This nostalgic device, you know, yeah, Switch hasn't been twelve million at all. users. That's a that's a well, big user base, man. Old, it's funny nice. that you said nostalgic it because is. when like, we played Nintendo, the state of the art. <laughs> they were not online uh, and old, they were it was old. offline games. Yeah, that's right. But, all right, okay, all right. Well, let's move to uh, yeah, yeah. story number three, Who two. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, another game that. Uh, it's really not a multiplayer game. Okay. Well, so have you heard of Baldur Gate, Baldur's Gate 3? I have heard of Baldur's Gate. I've heard yeah. it from you. You have talked about it 
uh, pretty extensively. It, it took over our Sea of Thieves games. Uh, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 is a pretty sweet game. Okay. And it has been named the Game of the Year of the Game Awards 2023. Uh, this rounds off a hugely successful night for the CRPG and its developer, Larian Studios, having also won Best RPG, Best Multiplayer, Best Community Support, and the Player's Voice Award. Baldur's Gate 3 actor Neil New- Nubon also won Best Performance for playing Asterion, who okay. that's... Is that, the, is that be, like Gandalf? Is that like the main guy in the story? No, he's one of he's one of the. If you've played the the Baldur's Gate, I played Baldur's series. Gate one. Okay, so it, it's 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 very similar to that. You you have your main character, yep. and then you go around and you find other people to gather your party to yep. venture forth with, right? Um, so Asterion is one of the characters that you can find in the game that can be a part of your party. Okay. At any rate. It won the Ultimate Game of the Year at UK's Golden Joystick Awards, along with six other categories. The runaway success of Baldur's Gate 3 has come as a surprise to many, not because its quality is in question, but because it belongs to a genre that many seem to be inaccessible to have wide appeal. Instead, Baldur's Gate 3 has attracted genre diehards and more casual fans, perhaps hooked by the characters more than anything else. Uh, now, it's got what is often considered to be the Game of the Year award under its belt, uh, not bad going for a revival of the series that hadn't had an installment since Baldur's Gate 2, which came out in 2000. In case you haven't checked it out already, then fret not. You don't have to play the previous two games to get what's going on here, but you should check them out anyway because they're great. Uh, frankly, given up, given all the updates Baldur's Gate 3 has received, Larian may be able to relax just a little bit. After all, it would give the team time to decide who gets to take home which trophy although there's enough to go around. All right, so you play this game. Yeah. Why do you think it won Game of the Year, in your opinion? Uh, I, th- I think it won Game of the Year. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it, in my opinion, is because this doesn't follow what has become a, a, a norm in the gaming industry. Okay. They did not release this as a, an early access game. Okay. Uh, it's not a pay. It doesn't have any microtransaction pay to play. Oh, no microtransactions trans- at all. Uh, I think it can be modded. Okay. Um, but uh, it's the game is was released as a complete game, uh, and they did a lot of the the debugging and things of that before it was released. So it wasn't really buggy when you actually played it. It actually worked. It, it you didn't worked, have to wait for yeah, a patch. Fine. There were patches that came through because okay. they had they had certain things that weren't working correctly, but they were very responsive. Um also it's it's also taking advantage of the RPG craze, which is which is uh the Dungeons very, and Dragons. Yeah, and very big nowadays okay. with uh, you know, Critical Role and all those other RPG game shows. Uh and it and it uh stands on a modified D and D five E rule set. So okay. people who play D and D can Do you have to play it online with people or is it an offline experience? It, it can be offline and it can be online. Okay. So I, I play it offline. You play it and you enjoy it offline just as much. Oh, as, absolutely! Yeah. Okay. I mean, and there's tons of stuff to do. So you know, it's not just it's not just a uh, straight. Is it like Skyrim? Because I played Skyrim. Is it a little bit like it's Skyrim? A little, yeah, it's a little like Skyrim. This, have, the Boulder's go, Gate Two was kind of like Skyrim. Yeah, with you, a lot of details of inventory of wood and stone and different stuff you could collect and. Yeah, you have you have a main quest that you you were uh, supposed to be doing, and okay. then there's the, like. Tons and tons of side, side quests. quests. So you go know. from one place to another place to another place. Yep. Okay. And you know, a lot of people have different. There's different run throughs, and I, you know, I've only run through it once, but you know, there's just all kinds of things to do. It's it's really it's really quality. It's a very quality game, and it was produced or or made by a a, I guess you would call them a boutique. A boutique developer. Developer. They, they, they spent a good time doing it. They they really did a. They really took into account the the quality of that of that genre and that game. And okay, they really did a good job. All right, we'll go to story number three. Here you go. 
What am I doing to you right now? Don't poke me, dude. Don't poke you. Hey, speaking of poking, Facebook is trying to make poking cool again. Yeah. Remember when you would poke your friends on Facebook to get their attention? Annoy them and start a poke war? Well, Facebook is trying to bring back that experience with some small updates to the poking feature. The company announced today <laughs> that it has recently improved its platform suggestions on who to poke and also made it easier to find the poking page through search. Plus, Facebook added the ability to poke a friend when you search for them on the social network. Facebook says these small changes have led to the 13x spike in poking over the last past month, despite many of them not being around to initially uh, enjoy the surge of poking. Young users are now starting to embrace this feature, as Facebook notes that more than 50% of pokes are coming from 18 to 29-year-olds. Poking is one of Facebook's oldest features, dating from the platform's founding in 2004, but it was tucked away in the navigation after it lost popularity. Facebook never defined what the idea behind poking was and left it up to the user's interpretation. Well, some choose to use it as a way to flirt. Now, the company is resurfacing the future along with Social Network's 20th birthday and framing it as an easy way to say hi to a friend. You might be thinking to yourself, I haven't poked someone in over a decade. Well, guess what? Instead of asking yourself why not, ask why. This is the digital version of bell bottom jeans. Uh, is it? Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. So it's going to yeah. just come back a, every ten yeah, years, it and it's going to be really popular, and then it's going to get annoying. Yeah, I mean that was an it was it was annoying because you'd get into Facebook ten years ago, back when I first had it, and this person poked you, and this person poked you, and this person. Yeah. It's like, dude, okay, just leave me a message, send me a message. You don't have to poke me. And then as soon as they poked him, they'd be like, okay, I'm going to mess with this dude. I'm going to poke him back. So they just go poke, 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 and it was yeah, very, very annoying. Yep. All right. It was well, very annoying. Uh, their tenth, their their, their tenth celebration. It's going to be back. Just wait to see it on the front page or Facebook. There you go. Nvidia they're trying well, really hard. They're, they're dying, so they're trying anything they can to re- resurrect anything to try to stay ahead of TikTok. All right. Story number four. Nvidia is using AI to turn game characters into chatbots. Let's go to David Larson with more on this story. NVIDIA is showing off how developers have started using its AI digital human tools to voice, animate, and generate dialogue for video game characters. At the Game Developers Conference on Monday, the company released a clip of Covert Protocol, a playable tech demo that showcases how its AI tools can allow NPCs to respond in unique ways to player interactions, generating new responses that fit the live gameplay. InWorld says... It's planning to release Covert Protocol's source code in the near future to encourage other developers to adopt NVIDIA's ace digital human tech. Do you want an AI NPC in your next game? Grand Theft Auto 6 might be the game. Until then, back to you humans in the studio. All right, here, this this is big. This is big. AI is taking on the road. Now, in the demo that was just released Monday, yesterday, it's essentially, you take on the role of a private detective completing object-based information on conversation with AI-powered NPCs. NVIDIA claims that each playthrough is unique, with the player's real-time interactions leading to different game outcomes. John Spitzer, NVIDIA's vice president of development and performance technology, says the company's AI tech may power the complex animations and conversational speech required to make digital interactions feel real. Okay, what what happens what happens when the AI yeah completely gets off of what it's supposed to be doing and you have it you start conversing about it with nothing that has to do with the game. See, I was just thinking of this. Anywhere. So this is what, this is the first thing that popped to my mind. We have a presidential election coming on up, right? So mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto 6 comes on out. What if you start having a dialogue with one of those NPCs and you start going and then all of a sudden they start ranting on a presidential candidate? Oh, that guy's horrible, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting, uh, curiously morbidly fun, but at the same time, completely out of the game. If I'm yeah. playing Grand Theft Auto 6, I'm all about stealing cash and and shooting up people yeah, and know, selling we, drugs. Yeah. How am I going to be talking about a presidential uh, candidate in an AI conversation? I don't know. I, I don't know. I watched I watched a guy do that to a, an AI bot where it was specifically supposed to be about a certain topic, and he was able to successfully get it off onto uh, dating and relationships instead of what it was supposed supposed to be be doing. Well, according to people that have played the game, the characters in Covert Protocol don't feel any more like real people. 
than those in the previous demos, but it's unlikely to soothe disgruntled video game voice actors who are concerned about how AI adoption will impact their careers and livelihoods. Now, I I can see AI taking some aspects on the non-important NPCs, right? So if you have somebody over on the beach doing something of not large importance, I could see that being an issue where you could just go and have a chat GPT session with a a character that you have in there. But I, I don't know how you do this for your real live. If, if this is like the main character, I'm playing Red Dead Redemption or one of these type of stuff, and as I'm supposed to be in this Western type of theming, and all of a sudden it starts talking about stuff that's current in today's world. I mean, that that would really not yeah, have I mean, me the, in the environment the cool, itself. The cool thing would be, you know, if you're like Red, De- Red Dead, Red Dead, why can't I even say it right now? Red Red Dead Redemption. Too, you know, you could go walk into a saloon and have a have a chat with the saloon owner. That would be cool, right? Okay. But what wouldn't be cool is if he started talking about current events. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's I don't know how they're going to put into that, but I, I I don't know. I don't. I, I'd rather them have the uh, the Jumanji movie series is all about like these NPCs. The new reboot with the uh, Rock and yeah. and Kevin Hart, and it's very funny when they have the NPC conversations because they're very dialogue. Specific and so it actually brings some humor to the film. I don't. I don't know if I. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, that is our. Are you, are you saying that you you're not sure about this? So that would not be. Yeah, no, that would be like. Yeah, the whole idea about NPCs is that you can kind of you get the same lines no matter what you say on your four dialogues. You're still going to get the yeah, same outcome, right? Yeah, I okay. got, took an arrow in the knee. <laughs> well, that is our tech, top technology stories of the week. Moving on, we have our letters segment up next with a few submitted articles by listeners. Buckle up, tech enthusiasts, as we drive our show 88 miles per hour into our next segment. See you after the commercial break. This is Mark. And Greg. For Copiers Northwest. With a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus. Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service. As long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Our weekly show covers the top technology subjects without a political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, with a little whiskey on our side today, Mark Gregoire, our whiskey connoisseur, is out. So we have Odie in doing our tasting. Odie, what are we tasting today? Well, today we're eating or drinking. Okay. We're drinking the 1792 aged 12 years. Okay. Okay. So from directly from their website, it's been 12 years is a long time to wait, but patience has its reward. Starting from the signature high rye recipe, this impeccable, impeccable bourbon whiskey is the satisfying result of maturing for more than a decade in the finest charred American white oak barrels. Um, rich flavors of vanilla and cocoa abound in this full-bodied bourbon. After spending 12 years in oak, this delicate fruit notes in this whiskey are met with a lingering, smoky finish that is more complex than most. About the stats. Okay. We're looking, the company is Sazerac Company, Inc. The distillation is Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. Okay. The classification is a straight bourbon, aged 12 years, with a 96.6 proof. Mash bill is undisclosed. And it goes for 60 on the market, but on the secondary market, it goes for about 120. 120 says so double its value. So it's got a smooth taste to start out with. It's not bad. I mean, most of the time, our first. I can tell it's a rye, though, because it, it has that but it it's has not... that rye burn. It does have Re- a rye burn. Did you get a rye burn? A yeah, little I bit. Got you, a get, rye you, get, burn. you get the rye burn, but not a burn of just the whiskey burn. Mm-hmm. The whiskey burn is not, it was not strong for a first 
taste. Normally, no, when I do a, a first taste, it's got a good taste like, and a nice finish. But it's definitely, I I can definitely get the the rye out of it. You can get the rye out of it. Seventeen ninety two, aged twelve years. I've tried a seventeen ninety two before, but not probably the twelve year because I don't think I like my seventeen ninety two as much as this so far. This is that I had a pretty smooth taste. Are you very giving nutty, it a thumbs very up nutty already? taste. What's that? Well, we can't. Thumbs up already? We can't disclose that yet. What's that? We can't disclose a thumbs up yet. Oh, I'm not going to disclose yeah, the thumbs up. Yet. I'm just saying. Please. I'm just saying. Calm yourself. Come on, it, let it, me it, alone. I'm trying to the, bait him. Hold okay. your excitement. Is it? it it's kind of. Do, do you taste the nutty taste in it? Um, no, I don't okay. taste the nutty taste. Okay. Well, I, I was trying to sound like I knew what I was talking about. Yeah, you I, don't know. I, you I, don't I, have I, a discerning <laughs> palate. <buddy. laughs> okay. All right. Well, Odie, thank you so much. We're excited <laughs> to taste this. All right. With our first whiskey tasting completed. Let's move on to our feature segment. Today, we bring back the funny yet informative reading of emails that I received during this week. This includes scam, phishing emails, and all-out mistruths. Disguised as legitimate emails in the segment we like to call letters. Letters. We get letters. We get back and back of letters. All oh, letters. We get letters. And the letters all have us. All right, we got a round table. We're going to go to Mike, Odie, and then myself and around that way and see what we have happening. Now, what do you have first up on the docket? Well, it's an example of what's going on today. Okay, what's you that? You know, it's that time of year again. Yep. We're all getting ready for what? Taxes. Taxes. I did all my taxes this weekend. Yeah, what, I gotta what, a, get, what a miserable time. I know. I got to get my Ugh. junk over to my accountant so that yeah, they I'm can do my Yeah, I'm avoiding doing mine. You're avoiding doing yours? Oh, what, what, what a time. Okay, yeah. so what so, happens? Uh... As always, because we're doing taxes, you're going to get hit with one of these types of things. And this particular one is from the Internal Revenue Service. Oh. Parentheses, IRS.gov. So it uses the IRS website in in the title. Okay. Uh, But the address is not from the IRS. Not from the IRS. Okay. So just understand the IRS is not going to contact you. They don't. They don't contact you. Not in an email. In an email. They will write you a nice letter. And mail it to you. And mail it to you. And say that you have 30 days to, to get your, uh, to, to, to get get your, your crap, crap in order together. Because we're going <laughs> to come give after you, an, you and yeah, take right. everything from you. They do not send you an email right. with any bonuses or any special thing. Exactly. <laughs> if, they, if they owe you money, you'll get a check in the mail, but you will not get an email. Okay. So this is one of those things, but it's very enticing because it says you're eligible to receive your tax refund. Oh. Uh, third round of economic inca- uh, impact payments. Oh. Uh, status available, which they aren't doing. Okay. We're not doing those anymore. Okay. Uh, we are writing to inform you about an important matter regarding your recent tax return filing. Our records indicate. Our record indicate. Always always just, look for the grammar. Yep. Indicate that we have received your tax return for the fiscal year. However, upon review, we have identified certain inconsistencies or missing information that require your attention and clarification. You will receive a tax refund of twelve thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars. Twelve thousand twelve thousand nine hundred and seventy six. I've never paid that much to the IRS, nor have I gotten that much well, back I probably have, in my life. No. But I, they're going to send that to this me. this amount once. Even the refund checks were not even that high. No. no. We we will process this amount once you have submitted the document we need for the steps to claim your tax refund to expedite the process and afford further delays or penalties. We advise you to hit the smash button. Oh, wait, that's, that's, that's the wrong button. Yep. Submit information button. For your convenience, we recommend not using a prepaid card because sending funds does not support this card. Oh, so they're telling you to use a credit credit card. Cried. Oh, that, that, they credit, don't want you to use a, a credit bank card. A credit card. You, you a credit think, card. Did you I say, say credit, credit card? Cried. I, that's what happens when you use a credit card. That's remarkable. Simply, buddy. Okay. <laughs> All right, Odie, you're up next, filling in for Mark. All right, so I've got an email sent to you from Jeremy Smith. Jeremy Smith. Do you okay. want me to read the exact email? As well, well? Tell, just tell him a little bit on the end, so he can explain it to people that are listening. Okay. Cause... So it said the subject line says, "Quick question." Hey, I just came across your website and noticed there was a significant error, which is potentially costing you business. Oh, no. Mind if I send over a video on how to fix it? If you are not interested, just respond no, and I'll take you off the list. Best, Jeremy Smith, Customer Success Manager, Pinned.co. Okay. In Portland. Okay, so now, but his email is pin. 
yeah, what agency is... expand.co. So it's not quite the same thing. But Jeremy Smith, he, you know what? He gave me his uh, address and he gave me his phone number. So guess what I happened to do? I decided to go on to Google Maps and to take mm-hmm. a look at this uh, location because uh, this is in Portland, Oregon. It must be taken care of. So lo- what does that picture look like right there? That is actually is it a mall? 1050 oh, <laughs> Southwest 6th Avenue, Portland, Oregon. This is what the address is. What is it? It's a boarded up. Store it's a front. boarded up storefront. It's front. a boarded yeah. up storefront that used to be a McDonald's. Okay. It was a McDonald's. Yeah, it has nothing on it. There's nothing on there. There, there is no that. That's a recent photo. Guess what happens when you call the phone number? We're sorry. Uh, no, no, no. You actually get through. All of oh. a sudden, though, I, I asked to talk to Jeremy Smith. There is no Jeremy Smith with the company any longer, and I had someone with a deep, deep accent that I could not understand saying that he could help me. So I just had to talk to him he and he could help me. trustworthy. So I felt really bad because I wanted to help Jeremy Smith help me with my website. But right. It ended up that Jeremy Smith uh, you're didn't losing quite out exist. On so much business. You're, yeah. Yeah. And you really and probably just, get, need that video. Yeah, I do. He just wants to help you fix it. He did. There you go. All right. So my next <laughs> one here I got. I got from uh, Nathan Mum at Hotmail. We got Xbox Microsoft Corporation. But the email address is support, K-E-R-Y-D-28150, blah, 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 B-A at Trails and B. I mean, look look how big that code. That's, that's like a, that's, that's like typing one. in a code for a redemption of a game where they have all those codes that's, that they that's do. That's worse than a yeah. redemption code. <laughs> it is. My Xbox bill uh, payment was unsuccessful. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, yeah. I have an Xbox well, membership through the Xbox company store because I used to work there. L- and it's for it's like not, the 2027. At least it's not Nintendo because then you could just be like, well, well, sorry. <laughs> We're unable to make the following payment to your Microsoft online account. And PDF password. They send you a PDF and they tell me the password is 13546845. Oh, wow. They gave you a password. So, so I could type that in and then all of a sudden the PDF would come up on stage and and would uh, take care of it. The only problem is my email client stripped out the PDF when he sent it to me, so there was nothing there. Oh, that's so, too bad. There you go. All mm-hmm. right. I, I think you have a uh, another one that was uh, pretty interesting. I got one from Sean. Well, oh, I don't know if it's interesting. I haven't read it yet. Oh, this is this is big. This is big. This is, I got printed out like four pages for you. So okay. This is-, this is from Sean Haber at okay. Sean at sandageconsultants.ccsin.com. Okay. Tired of weekly payments is the subject. Okay. So this is, uh, hello, Nathan. Mom, as part of our commitment to providing flexible solutions, we're pleased to introduce an option to simplify your payment process. Tired of weekly payments? Consider switching to a monthly payment plan with the added benefit of a line of credit. This new arrangement offers the convenience of a single monthly payment, streamlining your financial management and providing more flexibility in your cash flow. Additionally, the line of credit ensures you have the necessary financial support when you need it. So this sounds really so it's, okay. So this, this sounds really, really good. good, except for except for it really begs the question: Who are you, and why? Okay, what are you talking about? So here? now they they send you a link that says it opens a DocuSign document. DocuSign application. So yeah. so you click on the DocuSign. Okay, what happens when you click on the DocuSign? Is take a look up there on the internet header itself. What does it actually open up? Uh-huh. Now, if you open up a DocuSign, DocuSign owns DocuSign.com. That is their right. site. They've had it forever. What happens when you click on this? This is a powerforms.docusign.net and then a string of alphanumeric. Okay, so, so they actually purchased, so it's a PowerForm, which is a third-party provider, not a DocuSign document. And essentially, it is owned by DocuSign.net. Now, to do some more research on here, the document looked legit. It asked you for social security numbers, your last two pay stubs, your stuff that you would normally need to get if you're going for a business loan itself. But then all of a sudden, when you take a look at that address, you say, well, the real page is DocuSign.com. So who is the owner of um, DocuSign.net? By doing some research, by using a who is, we actually found out the owner of DocuSign.net. And what is that company? That Mark Monitor Inc. My, Mark Monitor Inc. And where are they located in? Meridian, Idaho. Meridian, Idaho. Okay, so now guess what happens when you actually go you and take three of five stars in the Chamber three of Commerce of, uh, the cha- uh, in the Chamber of Commerce rating. Now let, let's go and take a look at their information at their rating from their Chamber of Commerce. This is kind of their question and answer. They actually only employ two to five people. 
and the individual does not have a storefront in Idaho, but it's an individual listed as the business itself. Now, this is an individual that has purchased a domain that looks like DocuSign to essentially work with people outside of the country to scam money. So the moral of the story is, is when you click on a DocuSign document, please always look to make sure that you're getting it from a DocuSign.com location and not DocuSign.net. This company has netted over $3 million in illegal transactions that have gone to this company itself where people have trans... uh, Scribe the DocuSign.net well, instead of DocuSign.com. Okay, so we use DocuSign quite a bit, and this doesn't even look like a legitimate it DocuSign. It does not. It does not, because it comes on up and it puts a little check mark on your top left-hand corner. Do you want to authorize it? It does not, but it has the name DocuSign. Well, of course it has the name DocuSign, but, you know, again. What should you do? You, you should look at the URL to make sure it's correct, right? right. Look at the URL. Okay. All right. Last one to Odie. Here, uh, Odie, you're last. Here okay, we go. cool. Well, we've got this one from Mark Members, and the email is ibu2009634 at xmu.edu.my. Okay, so IBU, huh? IBU. Okay. IBU. Okay. Now, the subject line says 12 pictures, Mark Members. From Mark, it's a forwarded message, first of all. Okay. And then it says, from Mark Members, my old images, I'm assuming you still remember a couple of them, and then... Uh, a link, a web okay. link. Okay. To web see link. the pictures? Yeah, see the I'm pictures. assuming so. Ooh. And then at the end of it, it has a very long disclaimer. Okay, and what's the disclaimer? Oh my God, I don't even... Okay, it says this email and any attachments are privileged and conf- confidential information and is intended solely for the use of the individual or entity. If you are not intended recipient, you are hereby notified that you are any disclosure, blah, 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 blah. Any opinion in this email may not necessarily... Represent the opinion of XMU, Jane Jin, Education Development, SDN, BHD, and or its subsidiaries. Related Which is not companies. even the domain list that they no. sent it to in the email. Or entities, XMU, XMU neither warrants the integrity of the information transmitted nor accepts liability, including, but not limited to, all liabilities for computer viruses. Irising out. Arising out of or in respect of this email or its attachment. All right. So you oh, you click on the link and guess what? It opens a naked lady. Oh. <laughs> naked lady comes on up on your screen immediately. Really? Yep. So, I mean, that's what I, they. I, f- I felt like there was a, you know, a mystery there. No. That... So you click on the link and the naked lady pops up. And then what immediately does is it says, click here to see more pictures. Oh, so it's a bait. <laughs> so it's a bait. So then when you click on that, it starts downloading a virus onto your machine itself. Mm-hmm. And if you would actually click on it, what would happen is you would actually be uh, using the LockBit tool that we've talked about them hacking. Mm-hmm. This is a LockBit essentially sponsored event, and your computer would be crashed. Any computer on oh. your network would be crashed, and you would be okay. infected. Did you did you click on the I naked clicked lady? on an attesting in a testing environment. Well, yep. he, he in, didn't do it. And I didn't I didn't compromise well, I, any computers. I, I, I know, or I know, because you have <laughs> your you have your dedicated computer. I'm just curious to know if you went further. I, I did not, because as soon as it starts trying to download something into your download file, you know that you're in trouble. So be careful. There's scams like that all the time, and they're getting more and more aggressive. I mean, if you if, you shouldn't. Why would you click on a link from some dude that you don't even? Yeah, know? Yeah, a good rule of thumb is there, if you don't recognize it, don't open yeah, it. Yeah, there's there's so it. many reasons Common why sense. people fall for this. There's so many reasons, and it's all based on your psychology, isn't? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that ends our letter segment. Up next, we have this week in technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we're going to be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. Join the fun and grab tickets to GeekFest West, the three-day Geek Festival extravaganza of fun and entertainment that will take place on the third weekend in July. Learn more at geekfest.com. GeekFest will feature diverse activities, including a film festival, vendor hall, street fair, outdoor music festival, cosmic cosplay, and video game tournaments. Join us at GeekFest West, the ultimate celebration of geek culture. To learn more, visit geekfest.com. That is geekfest.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right. We're going to go back to March 18th, 1974. Atari introduces Grand Trek 10, 
a car racing video game. In the first arcade game to use a solid state read only memory ROM to store sprites for each car, the game timer, the racetrack, and the score for such of these items previously were done with mathematical manipulations for the dots that were on a sprite rather than an actual ROM itself. The game's controls included a four position gear shifter, a steering wheel, and two foot pedals. Also, as a first for the arcade game, the video game was the first driving unit designed for local pubs and large bars. This was to position itself next to, at that time, pinball machines as an arcade alternative. Atari reported losing $500,000 in 1974's fiscal year, uh, roughly as much as the previous year's profit, with Grand Trek as one of the major causes. This led to Atari into deep financial problems, leaving part of Grand Trek's legacy being the game that nearly put Atari out of business. I hated that game. Did you hate that game? I hated that game. So that that was big, that, though. I mean, it had both pedals. It had a break. Yeah, I remember, had, it, I remember the game. Okay. And I think one of the biggest problems I had with the game is that you remember you were talking about your the steering wheel spin. was unrealistic. You're like spinning. You spin it twice around. Yeah, and then so, you catch it just to move a, a ninety degrees. On right. It. So you couldn't you couldn't do that game with natural driving motions. You Correct. had to have you had to have modified motions. video game so, motions. So so it, I was a young I was a very young kid when I played this first game. I think I was probably nine or ten. It had already been out. I mean, it wasn't brand new, but it was out in an arcade. And since I didn't have any realistic driving, I got that sucker down to two spins and a half, and you grab the wheel, and then two spins on the other side and grab the wheel. And it was all about spinning in, in when, when did I you, did my when driver's did you see test. That? that was in 1974. You yeah, no, I played it in an arcade. I played it in an arcade okay. when I was young. I went, it was already been out before, but I went and played it. And oh, okay. So the, you must have found a. Because I, I, I remember that not being around much. Okay, and it was pretty. It was it, pretty unique. It, it was, was right only next... there for a, uh, I don't know, a blink of an eye, and then yep. like Space Invaders came along and blew everybody out of the water, and then uh, so it's really interesting Pac-Man. the story of this guy. The guy, I guess, was like a horrible project manager, but a good developer. He developed it on like a real steering wheel and a real gear shift and real pedals, and then when they went to do the game, they decided to use fake stuff, so it didn't work. So all you got to do is go in. There's probably at least, I don't know, a page and a half of, of just scrolling through the internet on IMDb specifically about uh, Grand Trex 10 Legacy and how it started. Yeah, well, I hated it. All that's, right, why, okay. that's why Nintendo almost lost. All right, well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mark's Mobile Whiskey Review. See you after this break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. It's our mumbling, Mark. (laughs) All right. I can't wait for this, Mark Mumble. All right. Here we go. All right, so do you know what we're celebrating today? Uh, it is Absolutely March no 19th. Okay. I have no clue. Listen, again, this is all courtesy of Mark. I did not write this. Uh-huh. What we are celebrating today on March 19th is National Stretch Mark Day. Are you serious? National think- Stretch Mark Day. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a day dedicated to honoring, embracing, and celebrating our stretch marks. Did you know that stretch marks do not cause any kind of medical harm, nor are they something that we should be ashamed of? Oh, this is exactly what National Stretch, Dar- Stretch Mark Day aims to achieve. This special day is a self-esteem boosting holiday where you embrace and normalize your stretch marks. So, again, written by I Mark. I feel suddenly boosted. So, I <laughs> Do hope, you feel boosted? I sure. Hope, how, how, who came up with the stretch marks? So, day? I hope I Nathan know. and Mike feel a little better about themselves now. Oh, oh wow. That's, that was the dig. What? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, All right, well, I get Mark. All right, Mark. Back to the whiskey. Like this year, 1792 was also a leap year that stretched out the year Ooh. for one extra day. Also in 1792, on June 15th, it was the first day Kentucky was legally recognized as a state. 
In fact, Kentucky is widely acknowledged as the birthplace of bourbon. Although not a legal requirement, Kentucky remains the unofficial home of America's spirit to this day. Barton 1792 Distillery was established in 1879, which makes it the oldest fully operating distillery in Bardstown. So um, why, why they do 1792 then? They should be, eight, you know, it should be 1846 yeah, or whatever be the heck that, it is. I, 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 For Mark, okay. finding this $60 whiskey is a great buy. There are not too many wh- whiskeys with an age statement of 12 years that deliver this type of solid and consistent deliciousness at this price point. This is nothing fancy, unique, or overly... There is nothing fancy, unique, or overly complex about this bourbon. It is a quality pour delivering a rich mouthfeel that combines sweet caramel and dry oak. Mark hopes the team in the studio enjoys this while he's out today. Yeah, not after the stretch mark comment. <laughs> Just, you know. Yeah, the stretch mark comment. Wow. I know, this is good, though. I am liking it. I, I'm liking it. I, I, I would absolutely have that on my bar at home. Yeah, you it's have, right in the right price range, sixty bucks. You, I wouldn't pay the one twenty secondary market price. Yeah, have Mike's Hard Lemonade on your bar. So what's that? You have Mike's Hard Lemonade on your bar. Uh, I do. <laughs> I also have a Screwball too. Well, Screwball's pretty good though. All right, Screwball's well, Mark pretty good. And Odie, thanks for the mumble. You're As always, whiskey and technology. What a great pairing. Just like Mario and Luigi, the most famous plumbers in video game world. Really? There you go. Let's get ready now for our technology fail of the week. Brought to you by Elite Executive Services, technology experts to help you out of a technology fail. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. Now we're going to talk about another video game. Apex Legends players worried about a flaw in the game after the ALGS is hacked. Now, the ALGS is the Apex Legends Global Series. This is essentially a tournament put on by Electronic Arts, and they had to postpone the North American finals after hackers compromised players mid match during the tournament. ALGS is, again, the esports tournament series where players compete in a fast paced strategic battle royale game. The series is structured around matches, including qualifiers, regional competitions. And, of course, the major tournament culminates into a championship event with large prizes. During match three of the NA, one of the players suddenly displayed a cheat tool called TSM Hal Al Hook. The hack resulted in the players being able to see the positions of all the other players on the map, giving him an unfair competitive advantage. The hacker then struck again, this time giving players the Imperial Hall and Aimbot. The tournament admins eventually intervened and shut down the match. Now, an Aimbot is one of those that will automatically aim in the center mm-hmm. of the person. Mm-hmm. You hit the deal, and then you get a kill. The game's developers have not yet confirmed anything, so it's unknown if the impacted players were compromised earlier or if the hacking was done on the fly during the matches. However, the hacks happen, and this is unprecedented occurrence in the ALGS history as there has never been a case of players hacked mid-match, causing the suspension of their tournament. There you go. So all these geeks getting together to play in this national tournament. They're playing in the middle of the game, and it's like a hide-and-seek type of deal. And all of a sudden, your heads-up display comes on up, and it sees every player on the map. Yep. Yep, and so then they had to, they had to cancel it. There you go. All right, well. Always cheaters. There you go. Well, we're going to head out to our last commercial break now. When we return, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to you by Story Coffee and a possible Nathan Nugget. See you after this break. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, we're staying in the video game realm here, so let me just tell you about a report that came out from Call of Duty's new voice chat modernization tool called TextMod. It's essentially an AI-powered listening device that moderates both toxic speech, hate speech, discriminatory language, harassment, and more on a headset in-game for the game Call of Duty. Now, why is it 
that some games produce a toxic environment for those that play in them. Some some games. That's that's like most. If you're playing online with other players, uh, more than likely you're in a toxic realm because okay. that's part of the gaming community. But are you really though? Because whoa, play- whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. What but- about Animal Crossing? Yeah, so if I I'm said not, in I, most cases. Okay, okay. so I played I didn't Mario say Brothers. All cases okay. in in most cases. Okay, I'm sure there are people that play Animal Crossing in a multiplayer environment that find some way of griefing. It may not be as bad as places like Call of Duty who are trying no. to enact this thing. But uh, the, one of the first things is uh, obviously is the mask of the internet. Okay, right there, it's people that are anonymous for the most part and allow them to get away with harassing toxic language and things of that sort. Second, secondly, uh, it's most of these games are competitive in nature. Yeah. And part of competitive competitiveness, the staple, uh, has been crap talking to the other players. Okay. Right, so that's 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 a that's a thing that's has always been around is trash talking the other players. So okay. that's a that's sort of a normal piece to it, but the anonymous piece makes it worse. And also, in many of these game formats, there's been studies that show that uh, in these in these firefights or whatever, your adrenaline actually goes up in your body and it can lead to angry outbursts and uh, impulsive behavior. So so there's three things that are attaching to this piece and uh, creating these environments for toxicity and cheating. Cheating is a, is a big one in many of these online platforms. Uh, in fact, it's one of the reasons why some of these people are playing at all. They're just there to see what they can get away with, whether it's aimbotting or uh, taking advantage of the communication delays. So I, I play Madden, so mm-hmm. I play Madden, and, and, and I'll be in the middle of a football game, and I'll be up like two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And what happens in that arena is all of a sudden the Internet comes out. So if you disconnect the game itself, mm-hmm. then you get a negative loss point. Right. But if you just yank out your internet connection, then essentially it considers that the game was lost and it doesn't penalize the person playing. So I'll be playing uh, for two or three games in a row, and I'll get absolutely no wins because as soon as I'm ahead and it's in the third quarter or fourth yeah. quarter, they just unplug the internet. Yeah. It's really frustrating. I'm like, just finish the freaking game. When I lose, I finish the game. So I I don't just change it. Yeah, no. these are all these are all part and parcel to the online community, and and you know anybody hearing this is probably going to give me flack for this, but the the gaming community is not known for politeness. Okay, it's no it, it a lot of uh, there's a lot of toxicity in the gaming community, and it it comes out in many different ways in especially in uh, public server places. Okay, which I was thinking you were gonna. Say that what might have been the reason why Nintendo is pulling their system. I don't think, system, it, I don't but think it is, it's more lag. I, I think it's, yeah. All right. That makes more sense. All right. Let's go to our quick Nathan Nugget. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right. And we can play out over music on this. Essentially, speaking of games, did you hear about this? We did because we talked about it. Mr. Beast is headed to Amazon. Have you ever watched the Mr. Beast videos? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Of- I, I I like the guy. I mean, he's he's crashed trains. He's had a train fall into a pit. He's done hijackings where this guy has to try to stab him with a knife. He's taken over stadiums and played hide and seek. Amazon and him have just come up with an agreement for him to have creative licensing. That means he gets to do whatever he wants to do for a new game called Beast Games. It will feature a thousand contestants competing for. $5 million cash prize payout. Now, this is essentially going to be done with Amazon, essentially outbid another major streaming rival, probably YouTube, um, to do the deal with Mr. Beats. He will still continue to do his YouTube show, but essentially Jimmy Donaldson, who is Mr. Beast, is coming to a show as the host and executive producer of of a reality TV show that says it will make Squid Game look like a child's version game compared to what they're coming out with. Yeah, okay, whatever. 
Are you excited about that? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. You're so excited? Yeah, can't you tell? Uh, uh, so excited. All right. Well, Mag, we're almost out of time. Let's go now to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, here we go. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What are we tasting again, Odie? Uh, we are tasting the 1792 age 12 years which uh, by the Sazerac Company. All right, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, I'm giving it a thumbs up. All right, I'm thumbs giving it a up. thumbs up. All right, Odie gives it a thumbs up. All right, remember, the science of tomorrow starts with Bye-bye. the technology of today. <laughs> See you next week. On Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.